Today on Engineering Newswire, we're taking our first taste test on Mars, building an underwater hotel, empowering the EcoBot with nothing more than... Ew. Swimming with the fishes has a whole new meaning with the Poseidon Resort's Underwater Hotel. The bold vision of L. Bruce Jones was inspired by underwater research habitats such as Jacques Cousteau's Cone Shelf 1 from 1962. It will sit 40 feet underwater consisting of two units that are connected to the land by two piers with elevators, allowing guests to enter and exit. One of the units comprises of 24 suites, a restaurant, and a bar. Visibility to the subaquatic vistas is guaranteed by transparent acrylic plastic. The other unit includes a lounge cum library, a spa, a larger suite, a conference room, wedding chapel, and theater area. While the on-island on complex will feature a total of 51 units, including 24 beach and 26 overwater bungalows, plus a land-based presidential suite for VIP guests. For those interested in staying at the Poseidon Underwater Resort, they are required to stay a minimum of a week's time at the mere price of $30,000. This includes air transportation to and from Nadi or Suva on the company's airplanes, four nights on beach accommodations, and two nights in underwater suites. There will also be a submarine expedition that guests can enjoy at the lagoon. Throw in a romantic night with a merman and you have yourself a new customer. Yeah. Scientists in the UK have developed a robot that is powered with poo. The EcoBot 3 is entirely driven by energy processed by its microbial fuel cells which turn sewage waste into energy. The EcoBot 3, which resembles an odd 13 pound wedding cake, is only the first step and still needs some work beyond picking better visual analogies for a poop powered robot. But don't worry, it gets better. Sewage is processed through a series of microbial fuel cells which transform it into useful energy. But to avoid poisoning its own microbes with the waste, once the sewage has been harvested for the energy, the robot creates its own excrement. Though the machine might be a little iffy to those who grow queasy with fecal matter, this model is an improvement over the EcoBot 1 and 2, which were powered by E. coli and dead flies, respectively. Fast track this technology to the automotive industry. With a Taco Bell partnership or a rebate program with KFC, I'll power my Honda for weeks. Since the birth of naval aviation, engineers have relied on experienced test pilots to help evaluate aircraft flying qualities and structural stability. By using pre-programmed automated aircraft, such risks are no longer necessary. Northrop Grumman and the U.S. Navy recently conducted the first land-based catapult launch of an unmanned system using their X-47B unmanned combat air system. The successful takeoff proves that the vehicle can structurally handle the rigors of the unique and stringent aircraft carrier environment. The first of several shore-based tests before the X-47B lifts off from a ship in 2013, the recent launch demonstrated the precision operation of a control display unit that is a key enabler of future flight deck operations. The display unit is a wireless arm-mounted controller that will allow a flight deck operator to control and maneuver the X-47B on the flight deck, including moving it into the catapult, disengaging it from the carrier's arresting wires, and moving it quickly out of the landing area. And if you need further proof as to whether or not the launch was a success, just check out this guy. Is that the happy dance of a failure? I think not. Those are fist bumps of glory. To keep with the Star Trek trend from last week, and not just because I wanted to be beamed in, we now have tractor beams. Like, zap a thing in space with a laser and pull it towards you, tractor beams. With that being said, we have a ways to go before we're beaming people aboard spaceships. These tractor beams were developed by New York University physicists to move microscopic items like silica spheres suspended in water. But rest assured, the principle has been established, and more amazingness is ahead. After working with single Bessel beams and failing, the researchers assembled a device that overlaps two of those beams, utilizing a slight distortion from a specialized lens combined with the effect of the cross beams. A strobing effect occurred producing enough energy to pull tiny grains of silica toward the source. As it stands right now, a full-scale version of this technique would require massive amounts of energy and probably destroy the object en route. But still, tractor beams! 
NASA's Curiosity rover analyzed its first solid sample of Mars using SAM, or the Sample Analysis at Mars Instrument Suite. SAM is a portable chemistry lab tucked inside the rover that will determine whether the environment can support or has supported life in the past. A complex choreography is required to get the sample inside of SAM. Think scooping sand with a Tonka truck out of a box that is 60 million miles away. Since the scoop may have contamination from Earth, the first three scoops were processed and then dumped back onto the surface, also establishing our first interplanetary landfill. Sam opened a hatch to protect it from accidentally ingesting windblown material, and Curiosity's arm positioned the fourth sample, a few thousandths of a gram, over the inlet funnels. Before the sample was dropped, Sam activated its inlet funnel vibrators, which moved the sample into a tiny quartz cup. After the sample dropped, the vibrator was turned off, the cup cover closed, and the cup was lowered into an oven. After the sample was baked to release its gases, Sam's three instruments digested them and gave Curiosity its first taste of Mars. The results are not in yet, but I'm betting it tasted a bit like my Thanksgiving turkey this year. Dry, gritty, and unable to sustain human life. Do you have story ideas? Comment below and we'll cover them in an upcoming episode. For PD&D TV, I'm Megan Zimba and this has been your Engineering Newswire.